of Jeremiah 20. Jeremiah 20. Jeremiah and a posher. When the priest, posher, son of Immer, the official in charge of the temple of the Lord, heard Jeremiah prophesy these things, he had Jeremiah the prophet beaten and put in the stocks at the upper gate of measurement at the Lord's temple. The next day when Pasher released him from the stocks, Jeremiah said to him, The Lord's name for you is not Pasher, but terror on every side. For this is what the Lord says, I will make you a terror to yourself and to all your friends. With your own eyes, you will see them fall by the sword of their enemies. I will give Judah into the hands of the king of Babylon. Who will carry them away to Babylon or put them to the sword. I will deliver all the wealth of the city into the hands of other enemies. Of their enemies. All its products, all its valuables, and all the treasures of the king of Judah. They will take it away as plunder and carry it off to Babylon. And you, Pasher, and all who live in your house will go into exile to Babylon. There you will die and be buried, you and all your friends to whom you have prophesied lies. Jeremiah complained, You deceive me, Lord, and I was deceived. You overpowered me and prevailed. I am ridiculed all day long. Everyone mocks me. Whenever I speak, I cry out, proclaiming violence and destruction. So the word of the Lord has brought me in sought in a reproach all day long. But if I say I will not mention his word or speak any more in his name, his word is in my heart like a fire. A fire shut up in my bones and I'm weary of holding in holding it in indeed I cannot. I hear many whispering, terror on every side. Denounce him, let's denounce him. All my friends are waiting for me to slip, saying, Perhaps he will be deceived, then we will prevail over him and take our revenge on him. But the Lord is me, the Lord is with me like a mighty warrior. So my prosecutors will stumble and not prevail. They will fail and be fully disgraced. And their dishonor will never be forget forgotten. Lord Almighty, you have examined the righteous and probed the heart and mind. Let me see your revenge on them, for to you I have committed my cause. Sing to the Lord, give praise to the Lord. He rescues the life of the needy <coughs> from the hands of the wicked. Cursed be the day I was born. May the day my mother bore me not be blessed. Curse me. Curse be the man who brought my father the news, who made him very glad, saying, A child is born to you, a son. May the man, may that man be like the towns, the Lord overthrew without pity. May he hear wailing in the morning. A battle cry at noon, for he did not kill me in the womb with my mother as my grave. Her womb enlarged forever. Why did I ever come out of the womb to see trouble and sorrow and to end my days in shame? Jeremiah 21. The word came to Jeremiah from the Lord when King Zedekiah sent him to Pasher's son at Mahaja in the peace in Zephahana, son of Messiah. They said, Inquire now of the Lord for us, because Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, is attacking. Perhaps the Lord will perform wonders for us. As in the times past, so that he will withdraw from us. 
But Jeremiah answered them, Tell Zechariah, this is what the Lord, the God of Israel says. I'm about to turn against you the weapons of war that are in your hands, which you are using to fight the king of Babylon and the Babylonians who are outside the wall besieging you. And I will gather them inside the city. I myself will fight against you with an outstretched hand and a mighty arm in fierce anger and in great wrath. I will strike down those who live in the city, both man and beast, and they will die of a terrible plaque. After that, declares the Lord, I will give Zechariah, king of Judah, his officials, and the people in the city who survived the plaque, sword, and famine into the hands of ne Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, and to their enemies who want to kill them. He will put them to the sword, and he will show them no mercy or pity or compassion. Furthermore, fill the people. Furthermore, tell the people, this is what the Lord says. See, I am setting before you the way of the way of life and the way of death. Whoever stays in this city will die by the sword, famine or plaque. But whoever goes out and surrenders to the Babylonians who are besieging you will live. They will escape with their lives. I have determined to do this city harm and not good, declares the Lord. It will be given into the hands of the king of Babylon, and he will destroy it with fire. Moreover, say to the royal house of Judah, hear the word of the Lord. This is the Lord. This is what the Lord says to you, house of David. Administer justice every morning, rescue from the hand of the oppressor, the one who has been robbed, or my wrath will break out and burn like fire because of the evil you have done. Burn with no one to quench it. I am against you, Jerusalem. You who live about this valley on the rocky Pacha declares the Lord. You who say, you who say, who can come against us? Who can enter our refuge? I will punish you as your deeds deserve, declares the Lord. I will kindle a fire in your forest, and they will consume everything around you. Jeremiah 22. This is what the Lord says. Go down to the palace of the king of Judah and proclaim this message there. Hear the word of the Lord to you, king of Judah, who sit on David's throne. You, are, you and your officials and your people who come through these gates. This is what the Lord says. Do what is just and right. Rescue, rescue from the hand of the oppressor, the one who has been robbed. Do no wrong. Or violence to the foreigner, the followers, or widow, and do not shed innocent blood in this place. For if you are careful to carry out these commands, then kings who sit on David's throne will come through the gates of this palace, riding in chariots on horses, accompanied by their officials and their people. But if you do not obey these commands, declares the Lord, I swear myself that this place will become a ruin. For this is what the Lord says about the palace of the king of Judah. Though you are like Gilad to me, like the summit of Lebanon, I will surely make you like a wasteland, like towns not inhabited. I will send destroyers against you, each man with his weapons, and they will cut up your fine cedar beams and throw them into the fire. People from many nations were passed by the city, and were asked one another, Why has the Lord done such a thing to this great city? And the answer would be, Because they have forsaken the covenant of the Lord their God, and have worshipped and served other gods. Do not weep for the dead king or mourn his loss. Rather weep bitterly for him who is exiled, because he will never return, nor see his native land again. For this is what the Lord says about Shalom, son of Josiah, 
who succeeded his father as king of Judah, but have gone from the palace, the place. He will never return. He will die in this place where they have led him captive, and he will not see this land again. Woe to him who builds his palace by unrighteousness, his upper rooms by injustice, making his own people work for nothing, not paying them for their labor. He says, I will build myself a great palace with spacious super rooms. So he makes large windows in it, panels it with cedar and decorates it in red. Does it make you a king to have more and more cedar? Did not your father have food and drink? He did what was right and just, so all went well with him. He defended the cause of the poor and needy. And so all well, all went well. Is that not what it means to know me, declares the Lord? But your eyes and your heart are set only on dishonest gain, on shedding innocent blood, and on oppression, and on oppression and extortion. Therefore, this is what the Lord says about Jerome, the son of Josiah, king of Judah. They were not mourn for him. Alas, my brother, alas, my sister. They were not mourn for him. Alas, my master, alas, my splendor. He will have the bearer of a donkey dragged away and thrown outside the gates of Jerusalem. Go up to Lebanon and cry out, and let your voice be heard in Bashan, and cry out from Abraham, for all your allies are crushed. I warned you when you felt secure, but you said I will not listen. This is, has happen, This has been your way from your youth. You have not obeyed me. The wind will drive all your shepherds away, and your allies will go into exile. Then you will be ashamed and disgraced because of all your wickedness. You who live in Lebanon, who are nestled in cedar buildings, how you were grown with pangs come upon you, pain like, a, pain like that of a woman in labor. As surely as I live, declares the Lord, even if you, Jerome, son of Jerome, king of Judah, were a sighted ring on my right hand, I would still pull you off. I will deliver you into the hands of those who want to kill you. Those you fear, Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, and the Babylonians. I will hear you and the mother who gave birth into another country where neither of you was born. And there you will both will die. You will never come back to the land. You long to return. Is this man drew home a sty of eyes, broken pot? An object no one wants? Why will he and his children be heard out, cast into a land they do not know? O land, O land, hear the word of the Lord. This is what the Lord says. Record this man as if childless, a man who will not prosper in his lifetime. For none of his offspring will prosper. None will sit on the throne of David or rule any more than Judah. Solomon, Jeremiah 23. The righteous burnt. Woe to the shepherds who are destroying and scattering the sheep of my pasture, declares the Lord. Therefore, this is what the Lord, the God of Israel, says to the shepherds who tend my people. Because you have scattered my flocks and driven them away and have not bestowed care on them, I will bestow punishment on you for the evil you have done, declares the Lord. I myself will gather the remnant of my flock out of all the countries where I have driven them and will bring them back to their pasture, where they will be fruitful and increase all number. I will place my shepherds over them, who will tend them, 
and they will no longer be afraid or terrified, nor will any um any be missing, declares the Lord. The days are coming, declares the Lord, when I will raise up for David's righteous branch. A king who will reign wisely and do what is just and right in the land. In his days Judah will be saved, and Israel will live in safely. This is the name by which the he will be called the Lord our righteous Savior. Begin with Isaiah chapter 4 verse 2. This term is used as the promised Messiah. This great king will reign with justice and righteousness. This idea was founded on God's promise of David. So, so then the days are coming, declares the Lord, when people will no longer say, as surely as the Lord is, who brought the Israelites up out of Egypt, but they will say, as surely as the Lord lives, who brought the descendants of Israel up out of the land of the north and out of all the countries where he had banished them, then they will live in their own land. The lying prophets. Concerning the prophets, my heart is broken with me. All my bones tremble. I am like a drunken man, like a strong man, overcome by wine because of the Lord. In his holy words, the land is full of adulterers because of the curse. The land lies parched, and the pasture in the wilderness are withered. The prophets follow an evil course and use their power unjustly. Both prophet and priest are godless, even in my temple. I find their wickedness, declares the Lord. Therefore, their path will become slippery, and they will be banished to darkness. And they, and they, and there they will fall. I will bring disaster on them. In the year they are punished, declares the Lord, among the prophets of Samaria. I saw this repulsive thing they prophesied by Baal and led my people Israel astray. And among the prophets of Jerusalem, I have seen something horrible. They commit adultery and live a lie. They strip in the hands of evildoers so that not one of them turns from their wickedness. They are all like Sodom to me. The people of Jerusalem are like Gomorrah. Therefore, this is what the Lord Almighty says concerning the prophets. I will make them eat bitter food and drink poison water because from the prophets of Jerusalem, ungodliness has spread throughout this land. This is what the Lord says, Almighty says. Do not listen to what the prophets are prophesying to you. They fill you with false hopes. They speak visions from their own minds, not from the mouth of the Lord. They keep saying to those who despise me, the Lord says you will have peace. And to all who follow the stubbornness of their hearts, they say no harm will come to you. But which of them has stood in the counsel of the Lord to see or to hear his word? Who has listened and heard his word? See the storm of the Lord will burst out in wrath, a whirlwind swearing down on the heads of the wicked. The anger of the Lord will not turn back until he fully accomplishes the purpose of his heart. In days to come, you will understand it clearly. I did not send these prophets, yet they have run with their message. I did not speak to them, yet they have prophesied. But if they had stood in my counsel, they would have proclaimed my words to my people and would have turned them from their evil ways and from their evil deeds. Am I only a God nearby, declares the Lord, and not a God far away? Who can hide in secret places so that I cannot see them, declares the Lord. Do not I feel heaven and earth, declares the Lord. I have heard what the prophets say. The prophesy lies in my name. They say I had a dream. I had a dream. How long will this continue in the hearts of these lying prophets who prophesy the delusions of their own minds? They think the dreams they tell to one another will make my people forget my name, just as their ancestors forgot my name. Free Baal worship. Let the prophet who has a dream 
recount the dream. But let the one who has my word speak it faithfully for what has straw to do. Wolf grain, declares the Lord. Is it not my word like fire, declares the Lord, and like a hammer that breaks a rock in pieces? Therefore, declares the Lord, I am against the prophets who steal from one another's words supposedly from me. Yes, declares the Lord, I am against the prophets who wag their own tongues and yet declare. The Lord declares, indeed, I am against those who prophesy false dreams, declares the Lord. They tell them and lead my people astray with their reckless lies, yet I did not send or appoint them. They do not benefit these people in the least, declares the Lord. When these people are a prophet or a priest ask you, what is the message from the Lord? Say to them, what message? I will forsake you, declares the Lord. If a prophet or a priest or anyone else claims this is a message from the Lord, I will punish them in their household. This is what each of you keeps saying to your friends and others. Israelites. What is the Lord's answer, or what has the Lord spoken? But you must not mention a message from the Lord again, because each one's word becomes their own message. So you distort the words of the living God. The Lord Almighty, our God, this is what you keep saying to, to a prophet. What is the Lord's answer to you, or what has the Lord spoken? Although you claim this is a message from the Lord, this is what the Lord says. You use words. This is a message from the Lord, even though I told you that you must claim, must not claim, this is a message from the Lord. Therefore, I will surely forget you and cast you out of my presence along with the city I gave to you and your ancestors. I will bring on you everlasting disgrace, everlasting shame that will not be forgotten. False prophets could not speak a message. The disgrace that resulted from the false prophets would last for an intended period of time. It's a memory where the dread forever. Since the people were not responding to Jeremiah's message of warnings and judgment, God had the prophet perform object lessons in order to arouse curiosity and effectively communicate to the Lord's message to the people. Passages The object lessons and parables of a prophet so this is parables, Jeremiah chapter 15, verse 111. The rune belt, a linen sash was buried and later dug up. It rune, its rune state symbolized how the nation, which was intended to be close to God, had become corrupt and useless through adultery. Jeremiah 13, verse 12, verse 27, the wineskins. Jeremiah prophecies concerning the broken wineskin symbolize the coming judgment. Jeremiah chapter 16 verse 1 verse 9. Jeremiah, Jeremiah celibacy. <coughs> celibacy. I don't know how it's pronounced that. <coughs> Jeremiah was forsaken to marry or participate in Jewish feasts to demonstrate how imminent God's judgment was. Jeremiah 18, verse 123, the potter. Jeremiah was sent to watch a potter make a vessel and then remake it into something else. This function as a reminder to the people of his God's sovereignty. Jeremiah 19, verse 1 to verse 15, the broken jar. Jeremiah's purchase, Jeremiah purchased a clay jar and then gathered the nation's leaders near the valley of Ben Hedshon, Jerusalem's landfill. There Jeremiah broke the lower jar 
as a sign of God's coming judgment on his people because of their adulterous ways. <coughs> Jeremiah 24, verse 1, verse 10. The baskets of figs. Jeremiah spoke of a vision in which he saw two baskets of figs before the temple. One filled good, ripe figs, and the other with rotten figs. The good figs represented the Jews taking it taken into Babylon exile, while the bad figs represent the Jews who fled to Egypt. <coughs> <coughs> Sorry, my voice is messy. The two basket of figs. <coughs> After Jeremiah, son of Jeroboam, king of Judah, and the officials, the skilled workers and the artisans of Judah were carried into exile from Jerusalem to Babylon by Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon. The Lord showed me two baskets of figs placed in front of the temple of the Lord. One basket had very good figs like those that ripened early. The other basket had very bad figs so bad they could not be eaten then the lord asked me what do you see jeremiah figs i answered the good ones are very good but the bad ones are so bad they cannot be eaten then the word of the lord came to me this is what the lord the god of israel says like these good figs i regard as good the exiles from judah whom i sent away from this place to the land of the babylonians my eyes will watch over them for their good and I will bring them back to this land I will build them up and not tear them down I will plant them and not uproot them I will give them a heart to know me that I am the Lord and they will be my people and I will be their God for they will return to me with all their heart but like the bad figs which are so bad they cannot be eaten says the Lord so were I deal with Zedekiah, king of Judah, his officials, and the survivors from Jerusalem. Whether they remain in this land or live in Egypt, I will make them a burnt and offense to all the kingdoms of the earth, a reproach and a byword, a curse, and an object of ridicule. Wherever I banish them, I will send them the sword famine and pluck against them until they are destroyed from the land I gave to them and their ancestors seven years of captivity in jeremiah 25 the word came to jeremiah concerning all the people of judah in the fourth year of jeroham son of Josiah, king of judah which was the first year of nebuchadnezzar king of babylon so jeremiah the prophet said to all the people of judah and all of his living in jerusalem for 23 years from the thirteenth year of Josiah, son of Ammon, king of Judah, until this very day, the word of the Lord has come to me, and I have spoken to you again and again, but you have not listened. And know the Lord has sent all his servants, the prophets, to you again and again. You have not listened or paid attention. They say, Turn now, each of you, from your evil ways and your evil practices, and you can stay in the land the Lord gave to you and your ancestors forever and ever. Do not follow other gods to serve and worship them. Do not arouse my anger with what you, your hands have made, then I will not harm you. But you did not listen to me, declares the Lord, and you have aroused my anger with what your hands have made, and you have brought harm to yourself. Therefore the Lord Almighty says, this because you have not listened to my words, I will summon all the prophets of the north and my servant Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, declares the Lord, and I will bring them against this land and, and its inhabitants and against all the surrounding nations. I will completely destroy them and make them an object of horror and scorn and everlasting ruin. I will banish them from them 
the sounds of joy and gladness, the voices of bride and bridegroom, the sound of millstones, and the light of the lamp. This whole country will become a desolate wasteland, and these nations will serve the king of Babylon. Seventy years. But when the seventy years are fulfilled, I will punish the king of Babylon and his nation, the land of the Babylonians, for their guilt, declares the Lord, and will make it desolate forever. I will bring on that land all the things I have spoken against, all that are written in the book and prophesied by Jeremiah against all the nations. They themselves will be enslaved by many nations and great kings. I will repay them according to their deeds and the work of their hands. The Cup of God's Wrath This is what the Lord, the God of Israel, said to me. Take from my hand the cup filled with the wine of my wrath, and make all the nations to whom I send you drink it. When they drink it, they will stagger and go mad because of the sword I was sent among them. So I took the cup from the Lord's hand and made all the nations to whom he sent me drink it. Jerusalem and the towns of Judah, its kings and officials, to make them a ruin in the object of horror and scorn, a curse as they are today. Frere, king of Egypt, his attendants, his officials, and all his people, and all the foreign people there, all the kings of us, all the kings of the Philistines, those of Ashkenaz, Gaza, Ekrion, and the people left as Assad, Edom, Modab, and Abram, all the kings of Tyre and Sidon, and kings of the coastlands across the sea, Dedan, Tur, Tima, and Buzz, and all who are in distant places, all the kings of Arabia and all the kings of the foreign people who live in the wilderness, all the kings of Zimri, Alam, and Media, and all the kings of the north near the far one after the other, all the kings of the face of the earth, and after all of them, the king of Shetra will drink it too. Sorry, I don't know how to pronounce these words. Then tell them, this is what the Lord Almighty, the God of Israel, says. Drink, get drunk, and vomit, and fall to rise no more because of the sword I will send among you. But if they refuse to take the cup from your hand and drink, tell them, this is what the Lord Almighty says. You must drink it. See, I am beginning to bring disaster on the city, and bear is my name. And will you indeed go and punish? You will not go and punish. For I am calling down a sword on all who live on the earth, declares the Lord Almighty. Now prophesy all these words against them and say to them, The Lord will roar from on high. He will thunder from his holy dwelling and roar mightily against his land. He will shout like those who tread the great shout against all who live on the earth. The tumult will resound to the ends of the earth, for the Lord will bring charges against the nations. He will bring judgment on all mankind and put the wicked to the sword, declares the Lord. This is what the Lord Almighty says. Look, disaster is spreading from nation to nation. A mighty storm is rising from the ends of the earth. At that time, those slain by the Lord will be everywhere. From one end to the earth to the other, they will not be mourned or gathered up or buried, but will be like dung lying on the ground. Weep and wow, you shepherds, roll in the dust, you leaders of the flock, for your time to be slaughtered has come. You will fall like the best of the rams. The shepherds will nowhere. The shepherds will have nowhere to flee. The leaders of the flock, no place to escape. Hear the cry of the shepherds, the wailing of the leaders of the flock, for the Lord is destroying their pasture. The peaceful meadows were laid waste because of the fierce anger of the Lord. Like a lion, he will leave his lair in their land, will become desolate because of the sword of the oppressor and because of the Lord's fierce anger.
So we're at Jeremiah 26. Jeremiah 26, early in the reign of Jericho, son of Josiah, king of Judah. This word came from the Lord. This is what the Lord says. Stand in the country yard, courtyard of the Lord's house and speak to all the people of the towns of Judah who come to worship in the house of the Lord. Tell them everything I have commanded you. Do not omit a word. Perhaps they were listening and each will turn from their evil ways. Then I will and and not affect on them the disaster I was planning because of their evil they have done. Say to them, this is what the Lord says. If you do not listen to me and follow my law, which I have set before you, and if you do not listen to the words of my servants, the prophets whom I have sent to you again and again, though you have not listened, then I will make this house like Shalom in the city a curse among all the nations of Israel, the earth. The priests, the prophets, and all the people heard Jeremiah speak these words in the house of the Lord. But as soon as Jeremiah finished telling all the people everything the Lord had commanded him to say, the priests, the prophets, all the people seized him and said, you must die. Why do you prophesy in the Lord's name that this house will be like Shallow and this city will be desolate and deserted? And all the people crowded around Jeremiah in the house of the Lord. When the officials of Judah heard about these things, they went up from the royal palace to the house of the Lord and took their places. The entrance of the new gate of the Lord's house then now reform your ways and your actions and obey the Lord, your God. Then the Lord will relent and not bring the disaster he pronounced against you. As for me, I am in your hands. Do with me whatever you think is good and right. And be assured, however, that if you put me to death, you will bring the guilt of innocent blood on yourself and on the city and on those who live in it. For in truth, the Lord has sent me to you to speak all these words in your hearing. Then the officials and all the people said to the priests and the prophets, This man should not be sentenced to death. He has spoken to us in the name of the Lord our God. Some of the elders of the land stepped forward and said to the entire family of the people, Micah of Marsha prophesied in the days of Hanukkah, king of Judah. He told all the people of Judah, This is what the Lord Almighty says. Zion will be pulled like a field, Jerusalem will become a heap of rubble, and the temple will be mound overgrown with thickets. Did Hezekiah, king of Judah, or anyone in Judah, put him to death? Did not Hezekiah fear the Lord and seek his favor? And did not the Lord rebel it so that he did not bring the disaster he pronounced against them? We are about to bring a terrible disaster on ourselves. Now you are our son of Shemaiah. From Kirat, Jerusalem was another man who prophesied in the name of the Lord. He prophesied the same things against the city in this land as Jeremiah did. When King Jeroboam and other officials and officials heard his words, the king was determined to put him to death. But Uriah heard it of it and fled in fear to Egypt. And King Jeroboam, however, sent Ibiam, son of Echar, to Egypt. Along with some other men, they brought Uriah out of Egypt and took him to the king of Jeroboam, who had struck down with a sword and his body thrown into the bearer of palace of the common people. Furthermore, Echemiah, son of Shaban, supported Jeremiah, and so he was not handed over to the people to be put to death. Here's a little article in my Bible. Does God change his plans based on what we do? It's Jeremiah 26, 3. Jeremiah 26, 3 says, Perhaps they were listening and they were turned from their evil ways. Then I will relent and not inflict on them the disaster I was planning because of their evil they have done.
Because of our finite captivity, captivity for understanding, we struggle to recount how God can remain sovereign over all things while giving human beings the freedom to obey him or defy him. In light of this conflict, consider the following statements the Bible makes up about God. One, we know that in all things God works for the good of those who love him, who have been called according to his purpose. Romans chapter 8, verse 28. The Apostle Paul did not say that God causes all things. The fact that we have free will means we are able to make our own choices but whatever we choice choose god works in all things to bring about his purpose many are the plans in person's heart but it is but it is the lord's purpose that prevails proverbs chapter 19 verse 21 this proverb reminds us that our plans cannot thwart god's purpose so even though we have free choice we can't disrupt what God actively purposes to do. The Bible never attempts to solve Yet this message is clear. God never changes. So as to mislead or lie, he is never caught by surprise. He knows the decisions each person will make. Yet in a manner we do not fully understand his knowledge. Does not infringe on individual's freedom before God. So I'm going to read 27 and I'm going to be done. Jeremiah 27, Judah to serve Nebuchadnezzar. Early in the reign of Zechariah, son of Josiah, king of judah this word came to jeremiah from the lord this is what the lord said to me make a yoke out of strips straps and crossbars crossbars and put it on your neck then send a word to the kings of edom moab Ammon, and tyre and sadon fruit and reese who have come to jerusalem to zechariah king of judah give them a message for their masters and say this is what the Lord Almighty, the God of Israel, says. Tell this to your masters with my great power and outstretched arm. I made the earth and its people and the animals that are in it, on it. And I give it to anyone I please. Now I will give all your countries into the hands of my servants. Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, and I will make even the wild animals subject to him. All the nations will serve him and his son and his grandson until the time for his land comes. Then many nations and great kings will substitute him. If however any nation or kingdom will not serve Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, or bow its neck under his yoke, I will punish that nation with the sword, famine, and plot, declares the Lord, until I destroy it by his hand. So do not listen to your prophets, your diviners, your interpreters of dreams your mediums or your sorcerers who tell you you will not serve the king of babylon they prophesy lies to you that will only serve to remove you far from your lands i will banish you and where you will perish but if any nation will bow its neck under the yoke of the king of babylon and serve him i will let that nation remain in its own land till it and to leave there, declares the Lord. I gave the same message to Zephaniah, king of Judah. I said, bow your neck under the yoke of the king of Babylon. Serve him and his people, and you will live. 
Why will you and your people die by the sword, Bama, and Platt, with which the Lord has threatened by it? Threaten any nation that will not serve the king of Babylon. Do not listen to the words of the prophets who say to you, You will not serve the king of Babylon. For they are prophesying lies to you. I have not sent them, declares the Lord. They are prophesying lies in my name. Therefore I will banish you, and you will perish, both you and the prophets who prophesy to you. Then I said to the priests and all the, these people, This is what the Lord says. Do not listen to the prophets who say very soon now the articles from the Lord's house will be brought back from the Babylon. They are prophesying lies to you. Do not listen to them. Serve the king of Babylon, and you will live. Why should the city become a ruin? If they are prophets, and they have the word of the Lord, let them plead with the Lord Almighty that the articles remain in the house of the Lord, and in the palace of the king of Judah, and in the Jerusalem not be taken to Babylon. For this is what the Lord Almighty says about the pillars of the bronze sea, the movable stands, and the other articles that are left in the city which Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, did not take away when he carried Jehoiakim, son of Jeroboam, king of Judah, into exile from Jerusalem. From Jerusalem to Babylon, along with all the nobles of Judah and Jerusalem. Yes, this is what the Lord Almighty, the God of Israel, says about the things that are left in the house of the Lord. And in palace of the king of Judah and in Jerusalem, they will be taken to Babylon. And there they will remain until the day I come for them, declares the Lord. Then I will bring them back and restore this, this, restore them to this place. Might as well just read Jeremiah 28 too, and then I will be done. The false prophet Hananiah, in the fifth month of that same year, the fourth year early in the reign of Zephaniah, king of Judah, the prophet Hananiah, son of Ezar, who was from Gibeon, said to me in the house of the Lord, in the presence of the priests and all the people, This is what the Lord Almighty, the God of Israel, says. I will break the yoke of the king of Babylon within the two years, and I will bring back to this place all the articles of the Lord's house in Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, and removed from here and took to Babylon. I will also bring back to this place Jeroboam, son of Jeroboam, king of Judah, and all the other exiles from Judah who went to Babylon, declares the Lord, for I will break the yoke of the king of Babylon. The prophet Jeremiah replied to the prophet of Hananiah before the priests and all the people who were standing in the house of the Lord. He said, Amen. May the Lord do so. May the Lord fulfill the words you have prophesied by bringing the articles of the Lord's house and all the exiles back to this place from Babylon. Nevertheless, listen to what I have to say in your hearing and in the hearing of all the people from early times. The prophets who preceded you and me have prophesied war, disaster, and plague against many countries and great kingdoms. But the prophet who prophesied peace will be recognized as the one truly sent by the Lord. Only if his prediction comes true. When the prophet Hananiah took the yoke off of the neck of the prophet Jeremiah and broke it, and he said before all the people, this is what the Lord says in the name. In the same way, I will break the yoke of Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, off the neck of all the nations within two years. At this, the prophet Jeremiah went on his way. After the prophet Ken and I had broken the yoke off the neck of the prophet Jeremiah, the word of the Lord came to Jeremiah. 
Go and tell Hanukkah. This is what the Lord says. You have broken a wooden yoke, but in this place you will get a yoke of iron. This is what the Lord Almighty, the God of Israel, says. I will put an iron yoke on the necks of all these nations to make them serve Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, and they will serve him. I will even give him control over the wild animals. Then the prophet Jeremiah said to Hanukkah, the prophet, listen, Hanukkah, the Lord has not sent you, yet you have persuaded this nation to trust in lies. Therefore, this is what the Lord says, I'm about to remove you from the face of the earth. This very year, you are going to die because you have preached rebelling against the Lord. In the seventh month of that same year, Hezekiah, the prophet, died. Okay, I'll stop it. <coughs> the end of Jeremiah 28. In the next chapter, we'll be starting at Jeremiah 29.